Hey everyone, uh, Mr. Tweet here. So uh, today I'm gonna go over the Fisher equation with you guys and um, this the relationship between like real and nominal interest rates. So um, to begin with, I've got a scenario up here. Uh, you know, it's January 1st, 2020. You walk into a bank, you're gonna get a loan. You're gonna borrow a thousand dollars. You promise that in a year, you'll pay back the thousand dollars plus your 5% interest that you, that you agree to. Um, now, I want to point out that this is a nominal interest rate um, because whether inflation is like 3% or 1% or 30%, you're paying the same amount. So it's not going to change based on inflation. It's not adjusted for inflation. So that makes it a nominal interest rate. All right. Now, uh, now let's fast forward a year. It's January 1st, 2021. You walk into the bank. You pay them the thousand dollars plus the five percent interest, so you pay them one thousand fifty dollars, like you promised. And um, I'm giving you some additional information here. Turns out there's been three percent inflation from January first, 2020, to January first, 2021. So we've got a three percent inflation rate. You pay back your loan. The question I have is, what is the real interest rate that you paid? How much interest did you really pay? So let's break this down, right? First thing is of this 1,050, how much was the original amount? You might be tempted to say $1,000 was the original amount that you borrowed. But what's happened over time is prices have gone up by 3%. So the equivalent of $1,000 in 2020 would be $1,030 in 2021. That's 1,000 plus 3% inflation would be 1,030. So what this means is of the $1,050 you're paying, 1,030 of them is the equivalent of the original $1,000, which means we have $20 left over that's actual interest that you're paying, right? That's real interest. Because once we adjust the original amount for inflation, we see there's only $20 left of interest, right? Not 50. So what that means is that you're actually paying $20 of interest on the original loan. Now we can compare that $20. We can compare it to the original $1,000 and we would see that it's 2%, right? In reality, we probably should compare that twenty dollars to what the uh, you know to the one thousand thirty equivalency. We should probably compare it to that, and we would see that what you really paid was one point nine percent because of the the, the the you know you lost basically that 01 percent due to that three percent inflation away from the twenty dollars. So that the twenty dollars isn't even really twenty dollars; it's twenty dollars in twenty twenty one which is the equivalent of like $19 and I don't know, 30 cents or something like that in 2021. So um, there's a shortcut we can use for this, right? That if we wanna know like what the real interest rate is, instead of doing all of this, um, you know, there was this economist guy named Fisher. He was like, look, I've got a shortcut for you here. It's called the Fisher equation. For the Fisher equation, it only works with like percentages. So you gotta be careful. But the Fisher equation says nominal equals real plus inflation, all right? So again, nominal equals real plus inflation. We can plug our numbers in there from, the, from this whole question here, and we can see how it works, all right? So my nominal interest rate, right, we set up here that the original interest rate was 5%. My inflation rate. percent So I've got a nominal interest rate of 5%, an inflation rate of 3%, and then we could use this to just solve for x. And what we would find is that our real interest rate is, again, 2%. So we get 5 minus 3 gives us 2 as our answer. And notice that's what we had down here before. Again, close enough to the actual, you know, to that 1.93 or whatever it is, close enough, 2% that it works for us. So that's our Fisher equation. How you end up using this is really kind of two different scenarios. So the first one is like, I could say, you know, once we know what the real interest rate is, right? So I'll maybe erase this, plug it in right here. 
once we know what the real interest rate is, if the inflation rate changes, we can predict how banks are going to change their interest rates. So if inflation goes to 4%, right? If inflation goes to 4%, banks are going to still want to make their 2% profit. That's not going to change. So what's going to happen is we're going to see the nominal interest rate on new loans is going to go to 6%. So anything that's not locked in, the nominal interest rate is gonna change because of that change to inflation, the real interest rate stays the same. But what about our original loan, right? The bank can't go back and change that unless I agree to it ahead of time, right? And for most AP Econ questions, they're gonna, you're gonna be assumed a fixed interest rate that doesn't change. So if it was a fixed interest rate that couldn't change, and if the bank was anticipating 3% inflation, but it turned out to be four, what does that mean? Well, what that means is my nominal interest rate, if it's locked in at five, it stays at 5%. If the inflation rate goes to four, that means my real has to go down to one. So what we see, right, when we have inflation is inflation makes the, 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 the price of new loans, it makes nominal interest rates go up. For existing old loans, it makes the real interest rate go down, all right? So that's how when we get a change to inflation, how it affects interest rates. For existing loans that are locked in, fixed interest rate, existing loans, when inflation goes up like 3 to 4%, we see the real interest rate go down. For new loans, when the interest rate, when inflation goes up, we see the real interest rate stays the same. And what we see is the nominal interest rate goes up. All right. So that's a little bit about interest rates and the Fisher equation and kind of how real and nominal interest rates are, are connected. You oftentimes see this as like a follow-up question on like FRQs and things like that. So, all right. Uh, hope this helps. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.